Hi, uh, I'm Ian of Pixelweaver.com, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the function and operation of my latest project, which is Engravar, which is a Raspberry Pi powered laser engraver made primarily with the addition of some other components from two old DVD rewritable drives. Um, I'd like to make sure that the due credit goes to Daniel Chai whose blogspot post is linked to there, and who made the original write-up on tutorial on how to build this thing, which I followed fairly closely for the most part. And the, the main changes that I've made is setting up a client software for another computer to make greatly ease uploading engraving files to the Pi. But the vast majority of the code and the circuit design is his. So check out his post if you actually want to do this for real. And if you do want to do this for real, another warning is in, should, should go out that this lasers are extremely dangerous, especially this one. This thing is capable of engraving wood and plastic. And if it is capable of engraving wood and plastic, it is certainly capable of engraving your retina. So don't do anything dumb. Um, so safety warnings aside, let's go ahead and take a look at Engravar and see how it works. So here we can see Engravar spread out in its full glory and the first thing that probably strikes you is that it's split into three main sections and over here on the right is the Raspberry Pi itself. This is the main brain you might say. It's, it's running all the code to interpret the engraving file and send the requisite instructions to the motors and to the laser it's also handling internet connectivity, that's why it has the... I have a wireless card plugged in, you could also use Ethernet if you wanted. Um, because the uh, wrapper, the client software that I wrote for another computer, is sending the files to the Pi over the internet. I'll go, I'll go into more detail about how that works later when I actually start talking about that software. Um, then, this center part, that Pi is connected to it by standard old ribbon cable is these this driver board and it drives both the motors and the lasers uh, way over here is the first motor driver it's just a standard H bridge um, any old dip package H bridge will probably work um, I used a slightly different one than Daniel did in his post but it, it, it works fine no problems this, this is the H bridge that SparkFun sells uh, here's the second one. You need two full H bridges, well actually four, to drive both motors and so each one of these is dual and drives one motor. This thing is a voltage regulator. I'm powering this whole mess with seven volts I believe, seven volt wall warp, and this regulates that down to five volts for use by the motors. And over here, closest to the camera, is the laser driver circuit which mostly consists of this little guy, which is an LM317 uh, constant current voltage regulator, and that's doing most of the heavy lifting driving the laser. And this is a emergency kill switch for the laser, which is useful because the laser, the way that the circuit's set up, it kind of defaults to on if the Pi is not telling it to do anything else. So this lets you switch it off and on in case something happens and you want it to, act to stop engraving. And then over here you can see the two frames that came out of the DVD drives and um, they essentially work by this bottom part moves forward and backward, the top part moves right to left, and the result is that you can get 2D, you can place yourself anywhere within this 2D square and engrave any object that fits inside that shape. Um, and then the laser itself, you can't really see, it's on the other side of this um, the DVD part, but it's actually the engraver, in, the rewriting burning red laser diode from the DVD drive. So really, the only extra thing you need to get for this entire project is these little um, circ uh, integrated circuits, ICs, if you don't have them already, and they're like 
extremely cheap. You can pick them up at Radio Shack for probably $10 total. And the actual casing for the laser that it's in on the other side, which is hard, which you can't see from this angle, which is $3 off of eBay. So this whole project, if you have a Pi already, and you have two DVD drives lying around, it sums up to about a $10 bill, which is very, very good, and it, that's part of what makes this such a cool project. Um, so now that you can, you've kind of seen how it works, let's go ahead and um, engrave something. Okay, so here we are on my computer. I'm using a Mac. There isn't any particular reason that you need to use a Mac. A Linux machine will work fine. A Windows machine, you may have some trouble because of how Windows machines don't use the same bash shell, they don't use the same terminal as Macs and Unix machines, and Linux machines, just Unix machines in general. And um, that's how, that the way that I've written this Python script that I'm going to use later re relies on that fact. So you would need to use an emulator of some sort if you wanted to use Windows. If you can get it to work, let me know and I will tell people. So, to begin with, I'm going to draw what I want to engrave. Now, I have this 35 by 35 millimeter canvas, and you can set that by going to File, Document Properties, and make sure that the units are millimeters and the width and height are both 35. That makes this square the same size as the square that I showed you on the engraver itself. And that's very important to make sure that you don't make something that's too large and it won't be able to engrave it. Scale is very important. The software is not going to try to auto-scale anything down for you. You've got to make sure it's the right scale to begin with. So I'm going to have the engraver type its name this time. Not very creative. You could, if you have crazy Inkscape skills, you can engrave whatever you want to, but bear in mind that it's always going to, you can, it's only capable of engraving paths, so it'll It'll do the outline of this text in this case. I want this to be myriad and semi bold. That looks better. Okay, now we'll make this bigger. It's a little bit too big. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and center it, approximately. And so now we have what we want. Now, it, because it, it's at the moment it's text, and if I want the uh, Inkscape to actually generate the G code, that's the actual instructions that the Pi is going to run, I'm going to need to go to Path, Object to Path, and now Extensions. G code tools, and you'll need to install the G code tools extension to Inkscape if you have not already. Um, I think in the next version of Inkscape, or the current beta, it's built in. Um, this is a slightly different software than David used in his tutorial, so I've had to make some modifications to his software that is capable of reading the sort of G code the G code tools generates, and he used a different extension. But G code tools is a more sort of standard. Um, extension for generating G-code from Inkscape, so that's why I'm using it. So I'm going to go to G-code tools, path to G-code, and preferences, and I want to call this something creative, like engraver. And so now we can just hit apply. Um, it's probably going to give you a couple errors if you haven't gone to the trouble of setting on G-Code's uh, preferences. The, this is just saying it's going to do default. Default is totally fine in this case. And now you can see it's actually generated this cool little representation. You can see exactly how the, um, how the G-Code is going to tell the these arrows represent the movements of the laser. So I'm gonna, if you want to get rid of those, just undo. So now we're done with that. And now I have 
a file, engraver.ngc. So now I'm, what I want to do is send that file to the Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this Python script. Um, and this is the, the way this software works is it's actually sending SSH commands to the Pi. It's really very simple. It's just a wrapper, a graphical wrapper, so you don't have to SSH into the Pi manually and or in secure transfer and, and secure copy. You don't have to SCP or SSH anything. You can just do it all and it'll be automated by this little program. It's only like 50 lines. It's not a very big deal. So I'm going to go to Browse. I want to select this file. And I've written the program such that it's only going to let you choose NGC files. And we want this engrave r.ngc. And you'll see that the path shows up up here. And I'm going to hit engrave. And now the computer is going to ask me to make sure that the engraver is positioned correctly, power is applied, and the laser safety is off. Well, I haven't done any of that yet, so let's do that. Here is the power cable. And I'm just going to plug it in back here. And also, I'm going to go ahead and tear off this piece of masking tape and put it in a loop and stick it to the back. This is the piece of wood I want to engrave. Stick it to the back and now center it ish on this little actually it's too low. I want it centered. Voila. The tape is to keep it from sliding because if it slides at all then obviously the Engraving is going to be thrown out. Actually, I need to move this a little bit so it's under the laser. I'm going to go ahead and switch the laser on. And what you're going to have to do is slide the laser up and down. This is probably going to be really hard to see on the video. But you want to make sure that it's focused at the level of the the th what thing you want to engrave. So I've done that. Let's go ahead and put this piece of wood back. And the reason that's important is this la the laser is not collimated like a normal laser. It's not an even beam. It's focused to a very specific point. And that's the, the, that focusing is important because otherwise there wouldn't be enough power and that but that also means you have to make sure that the point is at the point the level that you want to engrave something at so no that's done so now we're ready to engrave once I switch this on I'm gonna hit go laser will turn off it'll go ahead and turn off again once I press OK and now the software is going to think for a while while it's sending the requisite data to the Pi and we're going to keep waiting. And there we go. Engraving has begun. And now it's just pretty much a matter of waiting. So I'm going to time lapse this, and it's probably going to take it around 30 minutes. And since you don't, probably don't want to watch it in 30 minutes, start the time warp.
And there we go. There is the complete engraving. So that's pretty much Engravar. The other primary feature is that um, the Pi fully supports SSH. So you can SSH in to the Pi and give it manual commands to the um, motors, which is useful especially for debugging. Also, Engravar is capable of engraving plastics, like this. It's hard to see on the camera, but that is engraved. The main thing about engraving transparent plastics like that is you have to make sure to cover the surface with uh, a marker, a black marker of some sort, because otherwise the laser beam will just go straight through. It's also capable of cutting paper, or so I, uh, Daniel says in his tutorial, I have not actually tried that yet, but since I'm using the same power laser and the same setup that he has, I assume I should be able to do so. Um, and that's pretty much it. Other, I'd like to add some other features to the client software so that you can set engraving speeds and maybe add that manual control in. Also, I'm kind of bit banging by sending SSH commands. It would be nice to set up some sort of nicer interface between the two. But for the time being, I think it works very well and it, it does pretty much everything it's supposed to. So, get engraving.